Be inspired on Liberty Radio. Have you noticed what this world is coming to? Hawaii. Destruction. More than a hundred deaths and over a thousand missing in one of the deadliest wildfires in a hundred years. The number of deaths in the wildfires in Hawaii has reached 96. Canada. More than 230 forest fires forced 20,000 people out of their homes in a struggle for their lives. The fires in Canada have intensified and could last throughout the summer. And the destruction continues. In Eastern Europe, a never-ending war. A bleak milestone, 500 days of war in Eastern Europe. On the other side of the world, North Korea declares that it is ready for war. Images released by the KCNA show that at least six ballistic missiles were launched into the sea by Pyongyang last Thursday. California. Political decisions bring drugs and misery to the walk of fame. When it comes to human behavior, the news is not at all good. The respect for life is becoming increasingly rare. A confession in an ironic tone. I killed them, guys. Details of a crime committed in cold blood. Did you act out in revenge? A little bit, but it was for fun as well. Are you remorseful? No, not at all. The world no longer knows what love is, to the point of exchanging it for artificiality. They have lost their understanding of what a family is. Children despise their own parents. According to the police, the teen is the perpetrator of the tragedy that shocked the city. He confessed to the police to have killed his mother and brother and shot his father. And parents who turn against their own children. He attacked his son because he was crying. A child whose life was tragically interrupted by someone who should have loved and protected him. Not even a mother's love is safe. Whilst testifying, Liara said that she killed her children within hours of each other. The boy was smothered with the pillow. The girl was strangled with a scarf. The profession of caring for the defenseless has become a weapon. A 33-year-old nurse has been convicted for the murder of seven newborn babies. In Japan, a man decides to become an animal. And in China, a company launches a robot dog to replace domestic animals. Do you really think that this world can be repaired? The latest news is at this level and progressively worse. It is as if there is a competition to reveal which is the most absurd current trend. Open your eyes. The world you knew is over. It does not exist anymore. And it will never be the same again. The current world has nothing good to offer. However, instead of lamenting, learn how to identify the signs behind this type of news. We are in the end times. And I regret to inform you, everything will only get worse. The Earth as we know it has its days numbered. The absurdities that we see on the news is the fulfillment of what has already been written. Jesus' return is closer than ever. Take care of your soul in order to go up with him. You will not want to be here when the worst truly begins. Good evening, everyone. May God bless you abundantly. Some of the images you saw there on that video, they were computer generated from movies. But there were others who weren't. However, 
if we had spoken, you know, months or years ago, that some of those things you saw there that were real were going to happen, you were going to say, surely not. Just like you look at those computerized images of catastrophes from movies and you, you say, well, this is never going to happen. And yet we see that the world is in such a state that things that were once unthinkable that they, were going, that they might happen are now part of our reality. Friends, this is a sign that the Lord Jesus Christ is returning. He's at the door. He's about to return. And this is why every Wednesday we have a service that deals with the kingdom of God, with preparing those who want their salvation to prepare for that moment. That moment where they will meet the Lord Jesus and be with Him for eternity. You who value your salvation, be prepared to join us every Wednesday for the night of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Because what in our mind until today was only fiction, was only the, the plot of a movie, is now becoming a reality. And these are signs that the Lord Jesus is returning. We're going to watch a brief video now explaining what will happen here tomorrow, just before the love therapy. Do you feel like your love life is a total failure at the moment? That no matter what you do, you cannot seem to succeed at finding a compatible partner? When you think that you're about to win, another disappointment comes along. You see yourself alone yet again, and even maybe with a broken heart. You may have started to wonder whether love is for you or merely a distant dream. It's time to change this game. Secure your victory in the love game and take part in winning the game during our upcoming Singles Hour. Let us celebrate your personal journey, connect with wonderful people and embrace the possibilities that lie ahead. On Thursday, 24th August at 7pm at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London N4 3NX. That's right, tomorrow we'll have the singles hour and sometimes we have people who say, ah, Bishop, the singles hour doesn't work. I've been to the singles hour, it didn't work for me. And actually this morning after the 10 a.m. service, I was talking to a couple that they are well advanced in their relationship, planning their marriage, and they met at um, a singles hour last year. Actually, you know, they were referred to by someone at the singles hour. So don't waste this opportunity. You who are single and you want to build a successful love life, join us tomorrow for the love therapy, but also for the singles hour. And actually tomorrow we'll be speaking also to the assistants. The assistants will be together with us tomorrow at the love therapy at 8 p.m. I'll be there with my wife. Pastor William will be there as well with his wife. But now, Every day for the past few weeks, we have been showing you testimonies from the powerful novena of healing and miracles. And today is no different. Let's watch two testimonies right now among the many. In fact, Sunday now, uh, Pastor Miguel was holding the service here. I, I had uh, the privilege of holding a service in Sweden in our church there, so I couldn't be here on Sunday. But I was told that here in the rainbow there was a queue I think of 17 people to give their testimonies in the powerful novena of miracles. And we couldn't take all the testimonies, we took some. But in all our churches, every Sunday people are testifying of the power of God. Like these two people, let's have a look at what God is doing in the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. So, How are you? I'm good. Amen. So, What's your testimony? I have two for my health and one for my finance, for my education. So with my health, before I was having a really bad cough, I think from some time we could even hear in service I'd cough a lot, even to the point that I would have to leave service and bring myself back together. But it reached a point that at night time as well, when I would sleep, the food that I would eat, I would cough so much that I would bring up the food 
that was eaten. So then I started to drink the water, saying for God to help for this to go and anointing my throat as well. And still doing the things I needed to do and coming to church and everything. And it was a while after, after a few times that I, even the next time I would vomit again, but then I had my faith, I kept on going. And then I didn't even notice that after a while when I would go to bed. I wasn't vomiting, I wasn't having this problem anymore. And then the cough completely went and everything. And then the second one as well was, um, even this Wednesday, I had a weakness in my hand. And sometimes it comes and goes, but it was even to the point that I was trying to write something and the pen fell out of my hand. I wasn't able to hold it. So I prayed and I rebuked the evil that was working there. And literally the next day, my hand is better now and everything. And the last one is with my education. So in my, I'm doing adult nursing, so I have to do placement and you have to get someone to sign it off for you. So there was an issue with um, someone that was having to sign for my last placement. It was up to the point where the deadline came and if you're not able to do it, you can't go into year three. So that means you would fail. And at first it was very annoying. I would complain about it, but then God showed me that I should pray for the person. So even when the situation would happen and it would overwhelm me, I would pray and I would bless the person that um, wasn't, she wasn't answering the email or anything. I'd bless her, I pray that she'd you know be better, I pray that she'd, if she has any problems that she's going through, she'd see a change in her life. And I wasn't complaining about it. I stopped speaking about it and anything. And there was a point where she answered the email back, sorted everything out, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna go into year three, basically. Amen. Ali God is pro Anita Pastor. Anita, what is the good news that you brought to us today? So even before the Sunday of November, um I had an impossible case which was regarding my health. And no one knew what the problem was and why I was going through it. So at the beginning of this year, in March, I was bleeding very heavily. Um, I bled for like 38 days. No one knew why I was um, bleeding. No one knew what I was going through. But I decided to give everything into God's hands and even change the way that I was going to pray. So I said to God, you're going to use the doctors. You're going to use those that are going to get to the point in everything. So. To cut the long story short, um, found out that I had one fibroid and polyps that was actually causing the heavy bleeding. So when I found that out, I determined that I'm not going to suffer again. And even that day when you came to the hospital when I had the blood transfusion, that was the day that my, um, my cycle actually stopped. I stopped the bleeding. And from that moment, um, when I had the operation and everything, my cycle has just been normal, no heavy bleeding, nothing. And then Wednesday, my mom came with me to the hospital, we went to the gynecologist, and I got to all clear that everything that came back from the biopsy, there was no cancer, there's nothing, and I no longer have to go back to the hospital. Amen. You see that yesterday. That was happening so last Wednesday. You see the, the old clear this last Wednesday. Yeah, last Wednesday I got the all clear, so my mom, my mom's over there, she can even testify that I got the all clear, they discharged me, they were like, you don't need to go back, I don't need to take tablets, and the other thing was, I was anemic as well, I don't need to take iron tablets. Wow, nice. And you determined, during this campaign here at the Novena, you determined that the impossible become possible. I did, I determined that. Before this impossible was over, this chain of payments was impossible, I was going to give my testimony. Amen. Give a strong clap, Ms. Why the powerful novena of miracles and healing? Because we have to decide whether we believe or not that the Lord Jesus Christ is the same, that He does the same things that He did in the past. The Lord Jesus is not an idea. He is not something that you, you choose to believe that He's there, but He can't really do anything for you. He is as real today as He was in the times that we read in the Bible. Of course, people who saw Him and could touch Him in the time of the Bible, perhaps you can say that they had an, an advantage on us, but the Bible actually says that more blessed are those who didn't see and they believed. And we don't see Him physically, but His power today is the same. I want to talk to you who are watching me now and you are struggling with an incurable disease. You that you've been told that this illness that you have is 
something you will need to carry for the rest of your life. Make your way to the powerful novena of faith and miracles this Sunday. We still have some weeks left of this powerful novena. And bring your problem with you. Make a chain of prayer until the end of this novena because you are going to see this Bible verse that we are going to read now coming to pass in your life. Look what the Bible says here. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If this Bible verse is true, can we put the Bible verse on the screen and my image there on, on the side, please? Thank you. So if you believe that this Bible verse is true, then claim it when you come to the church on Sunday. And you can go to a UCKG near you uh, that is, you know, relatively small, a small church, who knows a special work. Or you can come here or a, a, a regional headquarters. But there where you go, the Lord Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, we have testimonies of people in the church who were healed of lumps, of cancer, of different problems. People who, we had a lady last week who gave a testimony there from Plasto, that 21 years of immigration problem was solved when she came to the novena. And we believe in what is written here, that God, the Lord Jesus, is the same yesterday, today, and forever, meaning that what He did in the past, He can still do today. And I have here with me tonight, Pastor James. You know, Pastor James is there from our church in Kilburn. And our church in Kilburn is one of the most beautiful uh, UCKG buildings that we have here in the UK. But that's not what makes the miracle to happen. What makes the miracle to happen is the faith of the person. And if the person, I, I believe, not I believe, I'm sure that there we are doing the same purpose of the powerful novena. If people go there, not being perfect in their faith, but if people go there believing in this verse, God is going to do the same thing He did before in the life of this person today. Without a doubt, Bishop, because you are watching now, all you need to take with you is your problem, nothing else. If you are sick, if you are unable to, to walk, you can, you can even ask somebody to go and take you there because there is a guarantee what you just, you know, saw here, this testimony is what just Bishop just read here. It's true. Everything, everything suffered the effects of time. Your car, yourself, your money, yes or no. But you can be sure that the same Jesus that worked miracles, performed miracles, Thousands of years ago, he'll be there waiting for you. And all you need to take is your pain, your suffering, take your depression with you, take your headache, your addictions. That's all you need. There is a guarantee for sure that you'll be free. And I would even say more. Make a challenge with someone. Bring someone who is struggling, who is suffering with you on Sunday. Because they also will see the power of God, the miracle of God, the power of God today in their life. And I want to invite you now to watch the testimony of Jenna Lee Marfo. You're going to see the transformation that happens in the life of a person who chooses to believe. We're saying this because there are things that change in your life the moment that you use your faith. In that same moment, but a life transformation happens over a period of a person using their faith, learning to use their faith. But you have to start somehow, somewhere. And Sunday now can be the beginning of you starting. Let's watch Jenna Lee's testimony. We'll come back and prepare ourselves shortly for the prayer. I was going through so many problems that stemmed from childhood. I developed arthritis at a very young age, around 14 years old. I had chest problems as well, so I was always in and out of the hospital. I was very scared of the dark, all the way up until, you know, I was about 20. I couldn't sleep with the light off. I used to see shadows, even from when I was about three years old, I used to see things in my room. And I also 
used to experience like paranormal activity at nighttime where it's almost like I would come out of my body like that out of body experience and then I started having lots of panic attacks anxiety attacks deep down inside of me I just felt really empty so I would go home a lot and cry I'd even go to the doctor about this but there was nothing really that they could suggest because you know n there was nothing that appeared to be triggering these things it just came out of nowhere the lowest point for me I think was my internal battles that I had in my past relationships I remember certain experiences being involved with somebody who was very controlling made all my decisions I wasn't allowed to choose the outfits that I wanted to wear even makeup he always wanted me to wear certain things style my hair in a certain way and it was like this for a long time so you know I lost myself I didn't know who I was anymore for me it just fueled my inner problems before coming to the church I did try to you know create my own solutions to what I was going through. I used to party a lot. I used to go out all the time, drink. I thought that maybe this was a way to kind of like get everything off my chest. It's almost like I became a different person because I found myself enjoying seducing guys, but then last minute dropping them and really hurting their feelings because I felt like of all the hurt that I'd been through in the past, I just wanted to get back out to other people and just to hurt them the same way that I felt hurt, which obviously in hindsight is the wrong thing to do. But at the time, it kind of was like that release for me, but obviously it still made me feel empty inside. There were times I remember I felt so bad. One of the guys that I did this to, you know, he ended up going off the rails himself. And when I, when I saw that, I was like, I can't keep doing this anymore. Like I need to change. I need to find another solution because this was just not it. I was invited uh, to the user KG by a former boyfriend and I came because I was going through arthritis and the, the sicknesses that I was going through and that's how I, I started attending the church. From the moment I attended the church, I took the messages seriously straight away because for me, I had nothing else to lose. So this was my one shot to see if it works. And if it doesn't, I was going to leave because it would be a waste of time. But immediately I started to see changes within myself. First time I heard about the Holy Spirit was maybe, you know, a few weeks into me attending the church. I didn't know that the Holy Spirit could live inside of you. I didn't know that the Holy Spirit could really transform your life the way that he does. I didn't really know much about it. And I think at first it kind of just went over my head a little bit. But then afterwards, that's when I started to take it seriously. And I realized that if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be saved. I would end up, you know, being tempted to go back to the world, back to where I came from. and you know, be sustained by my own strength because we don't know when we're going to die. It could be tomorrow, it could be in 10, 50 years, you know, and in order for me to have the best chance at salvation, I needed the Holy Spirit to keep me going into the end. In order to receive the Holy Spirit, I had to make a few sacrifices. The things that I was interested in before, the music, the clothing, the interests that I had of the world, they all needed to go. Um, I needed to focus my time more in God, meditating on His Word, not just hearing about Him, but really knowing Him for myself and developing that relationship with Him. I did a purpose of faith as well. I, I wanted Him so bad that I would do anything to have Him. I got to that point in my life where I realized that it's not a matter of me just wanting the Holy Spirit. I needed Him. So even in things like returning my tithe, I was doing it because I wanted to test God and say, I want your spirit. I did my own purposes of faith at home as well by myself. I wanted to develop my faith. I would pray at a certain time, meditate more, seek the Holy Spirit more. When I received the Holy Spirit, I was actually in my bedroom. It was on one of the days that I was doing my purpose to seek the Holy Spirit more. And I remember being in my room on my knees and I said, God, I really need you and I really want you. And in that moment, that's when I received the Holy Spirit. Initially, I thought that receiving the Holy Spirit was gonna be a feeling, I'd feel something, but I didn't feel anything, but I just had an extreme assurance knowing that He was with me, that His Word is alive in me. And I didn't need to feel anything because it's, He works through assurance, He works through spirit, you know? So that's how I knew that I had Him. My life today is completely transformed since the day that I walked through the doors of the UCKG. In terms of my health, I no longer have any of those health problems. I no longer have depression, anxiety, sleepless nights. None of those exist for me anymore. My spiritual life has been a really great experience, steady growth. Also for my finances has been a steady growth as well. In terms of my love life, I'm now happily married. Uh, we have two beautiful daughters. My marriage is not the prison that I thought that it was. It's actually a blessing and it's been amazing being on this journey and I can't wait to see many more.
Today, I'm a completely different person. I'm very confident within myself. I know my value, so I don't need to feel like I have to prove anything to anyone. With the Holy Spirit, He's taught me so many things. And one thing that I always remind myself is that in all my ways, I need to acknowledge God because He will direct my path. Jenna Lee is living proof of the Bible verse that you see in your screen right now. And surely the things that happened in her life, they didn't happen overnight. Notice that she came invited by a previous boyfriend who is no longer part of her life because she had an illness, arthritis, at a very young age. Coming to the church, she was healed of the arthritis, received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, built a family, a marriage with the man of God, and this has been the fruit of planting. You know, we have to understand that every time that you act your faith, every time that you come to church, you are planting, planting, and then you're watering that seed as you use your faith. And everything starts with a step. If you find yourself right now discouraged, maybe you're going through problems, through difficulties. Maybe you attend a church, but you're, you're going through a difficult time right now. Don't let the problem you are going through right now make you believe that the promises of God are not true. What He promised, He will fulfill. And if you're struggling with something, remember that He has not finished His work in your life yet. And that verse that is there on your screen, God wants to make that verse to become a reality in your life. That the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And what He did in the past, He's going to do in your life. I want to say a prayer right now together with you here who are going through this problem. Maybe you are a church member, but you are going through a difficult time right now. Maybe you're not a member of our church and you, you're struggling. I want to pray for you so that this verse can become a reality in your life right now. You can receive relief right now. You don't even need to wait on, for Sunday. The relief can come in this moment. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. Heavenly Father, we present before you now all those who in this moment of faith come together with us before you, my God, with their pain, with their suffering, with their anxiety, addictions. My God, we believe that in you there's power because just as you emphasize us today here, you are still the same, my God. And we believe that everything that is written in the Bible is not only limited, my God, to the pages of this book, but can also today be reflected and extended and reach the life of those who are reaching us. Listen to this prayer now. So, my God, go and visit this person who is now in this moment, maybe in a, in a bed in a hospital, my God, maybe in a rehab, in a clinic. Those who are, my God, locked in their rooms, due to a depression, those who are struggling, my God, with situations that apparently is hopeless, is, is, there is no way out. Go and touch these people now, my God. Removing from this situation, my God, rescuing them now from this abyss. As you now touch these people, my God, may their souls to be free. May them be completely free, my God, from this pain. And prove to them now, my Lord, through your power, that indeed you are still the same in Jesus' name. Yes, my Lord. Generally, is fruit of planting, of using her faith. We can look at her testimony now and see the before and the after. And you want to do the same thing in the lives of those who believe in the promise that you made, that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. The only thing that we have to do, the currency that we have to present on the altar is the currency of faith. If this person believes, friend, if you believe, receive there where you are. The certainty 
that your life cannot stay the same. In fact, receive relief right now. Not tomorrow, not the day after, but now. Receive spiritual relief, physical relief, relief of your pains, relief there in your body, in your mind. You that struggle with stress, you struggle with torment in your mind, receive relief right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. My God, I bless your people and determine that you will manifest proof that you are the same yesterday, today and forever in the life of this person. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You are blessed, but I invite you this Sunday to be part of the novena, the powerful novena of faith and miracles in any UCKG, in Kilburn, here in Finsbury Park, or anywhere where there is a UCKG, even if it is a special work, a place where we only have two or three services a week, there, don't worry about the surroundings, what the church looks like. Maybe you say, ah, Bishop, I want to go to the, to the rainbow to Finsbury Park. I live all the way, you know, I don't know, outside London, because the church there is beautiful. It's not the beautiful church. By the way, I'm not saying this because I don't want you here. You are free to come. You are welcome. But don't put your faith in the building. The building will not change your life. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus and that man of God who will be there in the UCKG where you, where you will go. He will be using his faith, the authority God gave him to bless your life. All right? I want to thank Pastor James for being here. And may God bless you there at home. We'll be back with you again tomorrow at the same time here for Be Inspired. Don't miss it. God bless you. Bye-bye. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio.